Hey there, iSchoolers. So welcome to week four of our iSchool Career Services podcast. This is our fourth podcast that we are broadcasting to you. And we're so thrilled with the great reception we've had. And hopefully- I can't how believe this... we've made it four already. I know, four. Quick. We gotta start getting paid for these. Absolutely. We have to. Start charging a weekly fee. I'll have to <laughs> contact my agent about that. Well, you know how much we should charge. Oh, I know. Three dollars. Three bucks. We'll be rolling in the dough. That's it. Three dollars. So, uh, th- thank you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff Bouts and I, Christopher Perello, are here today, and we've got a really um, ambitious session for you guys today. Today, we're going to be talking about what to do if you do not get a summer internship for the summer that will be no- forever known as COVID-19 summer. And that um, seems to be on everybody's minds. Yeah, yeah. So especially if you're, um, you know, you're in a program and you know you you uh, are trying to get an internship, or maybe you had one that you were you were looking forward to, and that got rescinded, or they dropped the ball on it and said, "Sorry, we're not taking you right now." There are ways that you can spend your summer to make sure that you're that you're uh, looking good for employers come next year when you're on the market for a full time job. And so um, what I wanted to start off by saying is that now's the time to start thinking about a plan B, right? It's okay if you, I still want you applying for summer internships. There's still plenty of summer internships out there, but as each day goes by, I I don't want to lie to you. And I'm going to tell you that your chances for getting a summer internship dwindle um, as the days go by. And so um, what I'd like to tell students to do is to start thinking about um, projects that you can work on for the summer. Um, Maybe reach out to some faculty members and start thinking about um, special projects that they may have. A lot of faculty members have research funds or have opportunities to take on some students during the summer, especially remotely, where you can help them uh, and that could be a resume um, builder for the summer. Another good idea is working on uh, some certifications for the summer, um, you know, using whether it's uh, an official certification or using LinkedIn Learning that each Syracuse University gets for free to take on a certification um, or even Coursera if you're willing to take on Coursera. And some of the popular um, certifications that some employers are looking for, you can't go wrong with Python. Uh, Microsoft Azure was another uh, one of them. I wrote a bunch of them down. AWS certification, Tableau for data visualization for my data um, analytics friends out there, Google Analytics, um, Splunk, um, and any other AI certifications that can help you um, in the market. And the so, reason, Chris, sorry, I'm oh, sorry. The, no, you're um, good. I was just going to mention that um, there's a lot of sites now like Coursera that you can go on who offer um, uh, uh, certification prep for free. Yeah. So at least you can get the training for free, and then you know you'll have to, you'll have to pay for the certification. But um, a lot of a lot of companies are offering the even the certifications for a discounted price, the actual exam itself. So it may, it may, it's very definitely worth looking into. That's great advice. Yeah, especially if it's remote. Like you don't have to go and actually sit in a physical classroom. Which we can't really do. Oh, Coco's getting mad. Yeah. Oh, Coco, someone's outside. Yes. Um, and so look into that, definitely. Thanks for the suggestion, Jeff. And then the final thing that I would suggest, if finances are not as much of an issue for you, or if you have some financial aid to take advantage of, enroll in a summer class, um, you know, an online class, obviously. But um, uh, try to select a summer class that will either help you get ahead in your program of study or one that is project-based that will allow you some great projects to work on. So that way you have something to show to the employer and to articulate uh, articulate during the interview, this is how I spent my summer. Yeah, I wasn't able to get an internship, just like you know, 75% of my peers, but this is how I spent my summer. Yeah, those are fantastic ideas. Um, and hopefully um, students will listen to those ideas that you um, gave and will seriously consider doing some or all of those. I mean, let's face it, they, well, we have nothing but time. So um, 
there's no reason why you shouldn't take tackle take on some of those ideas, some of those projects. Um, I actually have three more that I wanted to add, believe it or not, to that master list that you just threw out. Um, right. One of them is um, practicing interviewing. Yeah. This is a great time to just go on, especially video interviewing. And, and this seems to be the type of interviewing the students struggle with the most, just because they have the least experience with it. Um, if you're a Syracuse University student, we have a tool called Interview Stream that allows you to go on and record yourself as you're answering questions. And then you can watch the recording afterwards and really get to see how you did both uh, facial expressions and answering the questions how you answer them. So um, practicing interviewing so that when it does come, come time for you to interview, you're ready to go. Um, something else is, um, and we've talked about this in the past, constantly networking, constantly seeking out uh, information. That's all you're doing, in doing informational interviews, reaching out to alumni and asking them questions about the industry that they're in and learning as much as you can about that industry. So once again, when the market opens up and jobs open up again, you're prepared and you're ready to go and you take some of that information that you just learned and apply it to your materials, whether it be your resume, your cover letter or your LinkedIn account. And the last one I'm going to mention um, is volunteer work, yeah. you know, do, you're looking for some volunteer opportunities out there. There's tons of companies, especially remote, that are would love to have help. Um, it usually is for free, um, but you get the work on your skills and you're still helping out in the community, whether it be for an organization or even for um, those that just want to help out other people that may be in times of need. So, um, you know, those are some other things to think about as well that you can talk about to an employer as to what you did during this time of, of we'll just call it downtime for right now, because we yeah. know eventually it's going to get better. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really, those are awesome three practical ways, um, strategies, especially the interviewing piece for international students who typically struggle with sort of the unusual interview um, um, occasion, and then you have to do it on video is also very stressful. If you've got the time, now's the uh, time to devote to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely agree. The I think the um, getting a new certification throwing on practice interviewing and maybe you using that new skill that you got in that certification in a volunteering type activity to really hone that skill that you just got, oh, yeah. man, that's you, you. How can you go wrong with that? You can't go wrong with that formula. Yeah. Nice. That works. Yeah. And look, we're not saying don't enjoy yourself this summer, right? Like it's still if, watch Netflix, watch Hulu, watch all those great TV shows you know, do a craft or come up, do something fun to blow off some steam. But for a nice chunk of, of your week, you know, try to do something productive. So that way you're not wasting away um, your summer when you uh, alternatively could have had a summer internship. Well, and yeah. not only that, it helps so that you're not feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. And you're not just sitting there and you're, you know, thinking about what could have been. You're actually doing something that is going to help you in your future. Yeah. That's the idea. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. People must think I'm very religious because on this podcast, I'm always saying amen. Yeah, amen. You say <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you say amen a lot. I d amen. I'm just glad to see that you changed your shirt. I did blue today. Yeah. I like Normally it. Normally I do. I have my olive green. I have my uh, hoodie, my gray hoodie, and I got today my blue one. Yeah, there's no cat hair, no stains. Uh, not yet. Yeah, it's good. Now, next week, hopefully, I will have on uh, a different one. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Jokester Jeff. Yes. Uh, so any anything else, Jeff, that you'd like to uh, tell our students this week before we sign off with week four podcast? Well, the only other thing I would say is, like you had mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, please. Um, don't use this as an excuse for stopping to look yeah. for internships. That yeah. That is not the point of this podcast. The point is, in the meantime, while you're searching for um, that opportunity for you to get an internship, these are things that you can do to help you fill that void. Yeah. 
Good work. Yeah. Nice, Jeff. Good topic. Yeah, good. Very good topic. So, uh, students, send us your questions so we can help answer for uh, for week five for next week. Yeah. You got it. Have a good week, everyone. Be safe. Hey, be healthy. You too. Thanks for your help today, Jeff.